It's been a long, hard day at work. It's the middle of the week. You pick up your kids from after school care and they ask you, mom, what's for dinner? And then you realize you don't know what's for dinner. So now you're tempted to go through the drive-through, spend money you were not planning to spend and on things that are not quite healthy. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you three easy Filipino freezer meals that you could have from the freezer to the dinner table in less than 15 minutes on those crazy weeknights. Okay, then what I'd like to do is just get all my stuff here um, ready. This is my prepping area, and this is how I've always done my um, kitchen, is that's the prep area. And then I will be using my cast iron pan for the things today. Now, even as far as the prep area, like you saw my counters, they really don't have anything on it and that's that's kind of the way I like it. My serving utensils are here, my knives are here, okay? And then my um, other utensils are here, but it's underneath the camera. Right, I also wanna add that you want a clean trash bag, so just make sure your trash can is empty, your recycling is empty because you'll be throwing things away or you might be op opening up boxes and you just want everything like a blank space. And then also I have this little container from my, um, I think it's a Ninja, you know, one of those juicers. And this is what I use um, where you can throw stuff in there. Okay, so for the first um, freezer meal we're gonna do, it's a Filipino chicken adobo. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had Filipino chicken adobo. It freezes very well, just like chick any chicken dish, it usually freezes well. I have my uh, cutting board, so the red cutting board is for meat, and I have my, I think this is called a shin, my Japanese knife here. All right, and then above here, let's see, I know I have peppercorn, whole peppercorn. Okay, yeah, whole peppercorn. All right, and then in my pantry, I have these um, photo box uh, photograph holders that you can get on Amazon, but I've used my label maker, bay leaves and adobo mix. So I just wanted to show you this, like you can add more flavor with things like this. Uh, this is the, at the Asian store, but also cost plus world market it has adobo uh, in packets like this, um, you know, cause it's of Spanish origin. And then bay leaves, you can, get this from your grocery store. Let me know in the comments below if you wash your chicken. Okay, so I basically have chicken thighs, chicken wings, and then the drumettes. So I definitely like chicken thighs bone in and with the skin. That gives more flavor. Now, obviously, if you want it a little bit healthier, you can take all that off, right? Take off the skin. So I'm gonna just start cooking. And as far as the recipes, I'll share it, but I'll also link below the recipes from a couple people or however many YouTube videos that I think you'll like the recipe. This is pretty simple, but basically I have the chicken, I wash it, one cup vinegar, one cup soy sauce, peppercorns, um, bay leaves, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oyster sauce and some sugar. Okay, also oyster sauce and garlic. So I like the garlic when it's already peeled. Get this from the Asian store. Um, this is the oyster sauce brand. You can get this at the regular grocery store. This is uh, Filipino vinegar. And this is the soy sauce that I like. This is my cutting board for vegetables, so I switched that out. So you've seen I've chopped these, this garlic, and it's about three to four cloves, I believe. Sorry, I don't do full recipes, but anyway, this is ballpark, right? That's how I cook. Uh, that's why I'm gonna link the recipes below. And I just tweak them. Okay, but even here, because this is a lot of, gar a lot of garlic. So um, this is actually for the other recipe that I'll show you. So when you're meal prepping, the good thing is that you can bulk chop bulk cut, bulk marinade. That's the whole idea of how you save 
uh, time so that when uh, it's that weeknight and you could just pull that meal from the freezer, heat it up, cook it a little bit or whatever, and get it on the table. Okay, if you've never had chick Filipino chicken adobo, find a Filipino friend, ask them to make it. It's one of the classic dishes of the Philippines. And as you can see, it's, it's all the ingredients are, um, are um, what's that called, accessible. Okay, you don't, if you can't find oyster sauce, which they actually have oyster sauce in the grocery store, there's nothing here that you cannot find in your local grocery store, meaning you don't have to go to a specialty store or an Asian store to get these ingredients. That's why I think it's a wonderful thing to show you for a freezer meal. All right, so you can see all the chicken in there, the vinegar, soy sauce, bay leaves, peppercorns, and uh, garlic. So I'm gonna add sugar, salt, and oyster sauce. Okay, the oyster sauce is about a fourth cup. I usually don't measure. I usually just pour it straight because it's one less thing to uh, wash, but here you go and then you just mix it well. So what you'll see with different Filipino recipes, like you'll see some where the adobo is lighter colored. Um, that's where, you know, maybe they've used less soy sauce or uh, that's one of the reasons why I like to use a little bit of oyster sauce to put more color into it. And then some are not as soupy as this. And so for my family, we like what I call soupy, adobo others you'll there'll be no like sauce at all it's just like the chicken on the rice but we definitely love the sauce with it and then when you go to cook it it you know the some of that sauce will simmer off all right so what we'll do now is uh take these uh bag holders okay put a link in the description below now, this is obviously not necessary but it's kind of a fun thing to have and it does work. You just can put it to the height of the Ziploc. And so it helps you to be hands-free if you don't have any little ones helping you or anyone else helping you. That is good there. And so what I'll do is put uh, the some of the chicken in, okay? And yes, it will drip every so often because I'm not perfect. Okay, you can even get one like a slotted seat, but I can't find it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna put a few in here, and then I have a smaller bag where I'll put a smaller portion. So if you want to like have this for lunch, or you just, for whatever reason, um, you, you know, it's only a few people eating, then you can just make it into smaller portions versus a bigger portion. Friends, I forgot to label first. So before I pour stuff in, you have to label. It will be much easier to write adobo. And today is the, okay. Oh, I forgot again. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, I'm gonna make two smaller ones of these because it's just easier. All right, I remembered right first, adobo. And there's also like pork adobo and um, beef adobo. Adobo is basically the, the marinade, right? The, the, the sauce. But I'm not gonna put chicken because we normally just have chicken adobo. All right, so this is supposed to marinate for at least two hours. Um, so I'm gonna put it in the freezer so that I could show you I'll probably cook this one so I can show you how it looks like because what you want to do, this can go straight into the freezer. Um, the way I have my freezer set up, which I'll show you in my next video, um, the Filipino food can actually go like this versus it being um, flat on the shelf like that. So, there, and I also use Ziploc versus a vacuum sealed bag because there's just too much sauce. It's gonna be hard to vacuum seal that. Unless you have a trick, let me know. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my freezer 
and this one in my freezer. So I'm gonna let this marinate and I'll show you how it cooks. Cause what you wanna do for those crazy weeknights, right? Like this will cook probably within the 15 minutes that I said, but what you can also do is cook it beforehand and then freeze it or cook it halfway through and then freeze it. So depending on how much time you want to save, obviously uh, the easiest is to have it all cooked, but I personally don't like to cook it ahead of time. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna cook it ahead of time. I'll, um, you could watch those uh, recipe videos and you can see how the adobo turns out. But, cause here my video is really more about how to freeze your meal. So me personally, I just like it to be marinated and then I cook it before we eat. And I'm telling you, it's very, very simple. Okay, I'm in my garage and this is the new standing freezer that I got from my parents' house. Over here is the Filipino food. So I'll just put it in here. And as you can see, I just stacked it up like that. And push it in. Okay, this next one is picadillo, and I like to use um, ground beef. Others use ground pork. It's just something we prefer. And actually when my daughter makes empanada, this is a good time when we make the picadillo because it's the same filling. Uh, it's basically ground beef, potatoes, carrots, peas, and raisins. Uh, I know that's interesting, right? Have you ever had ground beef with Raisins, I guess, probably, right? That's kind of not, not too different. Um, yeah, so this is why I have this little trash can. Oops. Here. It's much easier than trying to cut this over the larger trash can. Right? Plus, you don't know what's in the larger trash can. All right. All right, so I'm going to off some parts so basically it's uh two potatoes so, so i'm gonna do it's normally two pounds of ground beef but since i'm doing freezer meals i'm gonna double it so the ground beef and then potatoes two potatoes and then carrots so what i want to do is to cut the potatoes um not dice but a little bit between chopped and diced okay and so kind of like that size or you can make it even smaller when we make empanada I make it I'd, I'd actually dice the potatoes because they got to fit into that empanada pastry okay and yeah Filipino food is uh, influenced by Spanish right because um, we were conquered by the Spaniards for a while. So Filipino food is like Spanish, Malay, Chinese, uh, indigenous, right? Depending on where you are in the Philippines. And just like most Asian food, there's a lot of chopping because, um, you know, I do like to have vegetables in here. The ones I'm showing you today are not the completely adventurous ones. Like I said, the, like the chicken adobo that's, adobo that's um, classic. And almost anyone I know that meets me for the first time, they'll say, oh yeah, I have a Filipino friend. I like, a, or I grew up with a Filipino neighbor or whatever, or I work in the hospital and there's a lot of Filipino nurses and I like chicken adobo and they usually like lumpia, which is the spring rolls, um, pancit, which is the noodles. So anyway, those are kind of like the classic food. So even this picadillo, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's classic, but it's obviously these are all ingredients that you understand, right? Like ground beef, potatoes, carrots, peas and raisins. Now you can, you don't have to put the raisins in. Um, my family likes the raisins. So I um, had tested it out way, way, way back when my kids were younger. Um, do you like it with the raisins? Do you like it without? So they all definitely like it with the raisins. So that's how much potatoes. Um, 
I might add one more. I said two, but I think the one might be okay. And like I said, listen, I don't do exact recipes. That's why I'm going to link for you uh, in the description box, in the show notes. I know this is a huge carrot. We'll see how much we need. I usually use the baby carrots, and I kind of know how many of those. I usually do like 20 of those baby carrots, but this one, one huge carrot. Okay, guys, this is just a casual showing you how I freezer meal these three Filipino dishes. Okay, got the potatoes, and then we're going to do the carrots, or the carrot, kind of the same way. All right, so you can see this is what we have so far. I think I'm going to do one more, and then when you have extra carrot like this, I mean, if you're going to have a salad for lunch or dinner, go ahead and use it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because I am going to freezer meal um, some soup, and one of them is chicken noodle soup, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and freeze it for that when I'm ready to do that in hopefully a few days. All right, usually for vegetables, I vacuum seal, but since I'm going to use this in a few days for the chicken noodle soup, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in a regular Ziploc. And even the using the Ziploc for the adobo earlier, um, I explained why I use that versus vacuum sealing, which is basically all the sauce in there. And it freezes well, it's okay. It's not gonna get freezer burned. All right, what I like to do first is um, put some oil. You can use any oil, but we use avocado oil. You can use sesame oil. And then I'm going to go ahead and cook the potatoes and carrots first. All right, while that is heating up, I wanted to show you this. I'm not gonna use it today because I usually, uh, I'm gonna use it for soups. And so this is Eucopia, and basically it's a kind of like a freezer mold right where you can put something in there and then stick this in the freezer so that opens up like that okay but what you do is you take example you put your ziplock in here push it down um right you open it's usually for like a bigger one but see this is all done so what you do is that freezes in there and it keeps its shape when you're done you take this out like this, okay? And then it, it freezes to that shape, right? If you don't have a flat surface to freeze it like that and hold its shape, you can use something like this versus you throw it into the bottom of your freezer and it lands like that and it's all like all dented. And then you throw a bunch of those in there, it's gonna take up space. It doesn't utilize space if you just throw it in like this. So it's just a nice way to keep everything tidy, maximize space in your freezer, especially like for me, I have a standing freezer and you know, I, I would love another freezer. I used to have a deep freezer until it broke, but especially like deep freezers, it's great to have something lay flat or if you just have your regular fridge freezer, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a great way to maximize the space. And then of course you can do bigger ones so it's the same same thing okay let me put this okay so just imagine this one is here the gallon ziplock okay that goes in maybe when i do a soup video i'll show how this works okay so see that it freezes in there like that, so imagine now it's frozen. You take it out of the freezer because you're gonna be using this gadget again for the next other freezer meals. Okay, you open it up and it's it's frozen like that, see? So that's a lot tidier than, you throw, again, you throw it in your freezer 
and it ends up like this, you don't want that. Or at least I don't want that. But it, it's not, you know, do or die. It's just a way to just make sure you get tools that are going to help you. Now, if it's a, you know, cumbersome or it's just one more thing to think about, another thing to store, then you don't need that stuff then. But for me, I like it. Then I add salt, not too much salt because we'll also be using oyster sauce and pepper. Okay, so this is pretty much cooked. You can always cook it just halfway or almost cooked because when you go to reheat it from the freezer, right, it'll cook a little bit more when you're heating it up. So I'm just going to put it here for now. And then we're going to put the ground beef. example in between where the carrot and potatoes are cooking or like this is cooking because you don't need to stand here the whole time I clean so either example I put the either the sauces or spices away I can clean the bowl and utensils so clean as you go it's a lot easier unless you have someone in your house who you do the cooking and the other person does the dishes, then that works too. Okay, now you can see that that's cooked. I go ahead and keep the juices there. Add the potatoes and carrots. Okay, yep, that was just the right amount. I mean, you could always add more potatoes. And then as far as more potatoes and carrots. So soy sauce, I'm going to... What I usually do is I eyeball it, so I think it might be about a third cup. And then hoisin sauce is probably like a, a fourth cup. Okay, and the main sauce here is going to be oyster sauce. I'm just using the measuring cup because, like I said, I don't usually measure, but I kinda wanna give you an idea. So that's a third cup. Okay. That's why you don't want to put too much salt because, you know, these sauces already have enough salt. Okay, so you just want to do it like this. And so I'm going to add a little bit more oyster sauce because I don't think it's dark enough, so that's probably another one-fourth cup. Let's just say two-thirds cup for this much. That's why when it's, when it's only two pounds of ground beef, I just use a th like a third cup. Okay, so that's good. That's good. And then I already turned off the stove because it's already cooked. And so since this is a freezer meal, we we'll just take green peas. And we like a lot of green peas. So this is probably... 16 ounces, so let's say eight ounces, a cup. I mean, you could put, you could put in a few and see how much you like. Okay, I'll put more. Green peas never hurt in this recipe. Okay, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna put all of it. So you turn it off because it's already like still cooking, right? You don't need to overcook the peas. And that's okay if that's frozen since, see how easily it breaks apart? Yeah, see, we like that many peas. And then guess what? I don't have raisins, but I do have craisins. And I have used craisins before in this recipe, which is, it's actually, I kind of like them both. So you wanna, what is that? What do you think? Like a half cup? Yeah, so you just want to cover it enough like that. All right, mix it. See? Ooh, yummy. Okay. I think 
think I'm just gonna. So that was probably, this is six ounce, three ounce, probably two ounces. This is the rest of it. And we're actually done. So what happens is when you go to cook it that night or bring it out of the freezer, cook it that night, you taste it and you can add more, right? Since the peas aren't completely cooked here, I'm not gonna really taste it, but yeah, I always end up adding a little bit more oyster sauce and a little bit more hoisin sauce. Yeah, and so we just eat this over rice. P-I-C-A-D-I-L-L-O. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit first, then I'll put it in here. All right, so this is the amount I'm gonna freeze, which is about one, two, maybe four to six servings. And then I'm left with this. So I'm gonna, we're gonna have this for dinner, lunch and dinner. So usually I make enough for two meals, sometimes three. Okay, in the stand up freezer here in the garage. Also try to lay the food so that you can see the label. I think that would be easier. Okay. Okay, I kinda wanted to show you what the kitchen looks like right now. I've already cut the beef for the third dish, which is gonna be salpicao. It's like a tapas with the obviously Spanish influence that I've mentioned earlier on Filipino cuisine. So here's the stuff that I've got laid out. I have that because I've obviously I'm filming, but you can see here in the kitchen area, I've done all the dishes that I can. And then these are the ingredients that I'll be using. Okay, the ingredients are beef tenderloin. And if you don't have beef tenderloin, you could actually use beef stew. Um, it's just gonna be chunky versus sliced. And you want to get beef that is has some marbling in it. And then you slice it kind of into thin pieces like that. Because it's like a tapas, okay? Um, you also want the gar garlic. So we have garlic here from earlier. You don't have to finely chop the garlic. It could actually just even be smashed um, so that you can, I mean, you know, I, we eat the garlic. We love garlic. Uh, lemon, fresh lemon, and since this is about four and a half pounds, uh, that's usually what I'd make, four to five pounds at a time. My family loves this so much, and I'm telling you, it's like it cooks in five minutes, so I just marinate it, freeze it. Sometimes we eat it that week, so I don't even get a chance to freeze it, but it cooks up in five minutes, okay? Uh, you want, this is the main thing, aside from the beef. It's called Maggie. It's Filipino. And you can get it on Amazon or at the certain Asian stores. So I know the Asian stores in, here in Phoenix that carry that. If not, it's on Amazon. I'll put the links below. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the garlic in. All right, can you see that? Yes, it's a lot of garlic. Lots of garlic. Hold on, I need a spoon. Oh, I did taste the picadillo earlier and it is yummy. Like I said, I'm gonna have that for our food for today. Okay, there, just get, make sure you get all that garlic because oh, I've made this for my son's high school, my kid's high school way back. They um, had a once a month teacher appreciation where we cooked food. And a lot of the kids in that school were Asian, so they always had good food, but I made this for them one time and I have not, found anyone who doesn't like this. Obviously, if you like meat, this is good. Everyone has always liked this. They love the garlicky flavor. It's pretty awesome. Okay. All right, fresh lemons. And so I just cut it in half, then quarters. This is actually good lemon because I think it's from, those are the ones from our friend's uh, tree. Okay, and then I just put it in the okay. cake. Put it in the juicer, citrus juicer, yeah. And obviously don't put the seed, right? So you could throw this away, but I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rind, okay? 
and that way when we cook it up there's more of that lemon that comes out I know you may crucify me for this but that's how I do it you don't have to put all of it but I'm gonna put all of it okay does it make a difference I think so a little enough difference because it takes a lot of lemon so here you can look how this lemon is so juicy like I said it's from my friend's tree and they have so many lemons they they have to pass it out right of course you can wash the outside of the rind does it get fully cleaned I don't know I know I always think about all the things people might say but you're a great community I don't get thrashed on here how often at all okay can you see that I'll probably move it closer okay and look look how easy you know the hard part about this is the cutting okay now I don't particularly like to cut but when you're cooking, especially Filipino food, Asian food, you're always cutting, so you kind of got to get over it. Ooh, see, look at all that juice. Okay, so we leave that. All right, hold this over. Okay, you can kind of see that right now. So usually I take a bigger spoon. I'm gonna mix this. Now, if you want to take out the rind, let's take it out. Let's see what it's like. I don't know, maybe I should take it out. So I have so many comments. Of course, you can always put the rinds through your garbage disposal. See, I mean, I feel like that's a lot of juice right there. Look at how much more is coming out. I have this thing that can catch the seeds, but honestly, I don't mind. I take them out later. It's easy to see the seeds, so you're not going to eat it. And again, I'm just a home chef. It's not like I'm serving this at a restaurant. So you want enough lemon, lemons to kind of coat it, okay? And enough garlic where you can see the chunks of garlic. All right, so this one is almost out, so I'm just gonna use this. And the same thing with this Maggie. I put enough to coat it, then I, I add another layer because we just love what is this what is that oh whoa. that's a different <laughs> different nozzle dispenser what do you call it okay I think it comes out to probably like half a cup three-fourths cup at the most so for two pounds put a half a cup two pounds of meat and it's you know it's not gonna hurt to put more just be careful with it because it is strong and so you don't need to put salt you don't need to put pepper because this sauce is already salty enough okay and then what I like to do is put a little bit of oyster sauce oops meaning just enough again to cover and the reason for that is um the maggie kind of seeps through into the meat and i like the oyster sauce it kind of covers it yeah that's a little bit of a layer of flavor all right that's it that is it we are done i mean you could add more 
Okay, so when I actually go to cook this, which I'm gonna show you, this actually has to marinate. So I, ha I actually have some, hold on, I'm getting tired. <laughs> Okay, so this usually has to marinate, marinate at least two hours, right? Just like the adobo, and then you can you can cook it. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and freeze this uh, for next time. I actually made this for this week, so I have a whole batch, and I'm gonna show you how that cooks up. Okay, salpico. S A L P I C A O, and then the date. Okay, and I use a big Ziploc for this because once we take this out to cook, we cook it all. I mean, my family can eat this for three days in a row. They honestly really like it that much. There's no exaggeration. I think we've been eating this since Saturday. Today's Tuesday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, this will be the fourth day. They don't complain. They really like it. I'm not sure why. <laughs> and we just eat it with rice. Yeah, so those weeks when we eat Filipino food, it's it's rice it's rice week, and then the weeks we don't eat Filipino food, you know, we have a break from rice. So, hey, listen, Filipinos eat rice three times a day: Bre breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, let's see how this one will fit. I could have put it in two smaller bags, probably fit easier, but no problem. There. All right, when you cook this, you really want to use a cast iron pan and I'm just using some avocado oil. Uh, the reason, I, well, I shouldn't say the reason. I'm not sure why the cast iron pan does better, but I've cooked it in like nonstick pans. I've cooked it in stainless steel pans, um, kind of those green earth type of pans. I forgot what they're called. Copper, I've done were, no, not copper, but you know those, they're kind of like the nonstick pans, but they call them, they're more like sustainable or like green earth stuff. Uh, anyway, I've always found that the cast iron, that's when it tastes the best, okay? And so just heat this up, heat up the, the pan. Okay, I've set the kitchen timer to 10 minutes because I just want to show you how fast this is. Okay, I've already heating up the pan. You maybe add half a minute for heating up the pan. All right. Okay, it's hot enough. So I'm just gonna. Okay, let's see. This is about how much my husband will eat. He eats a lot of this. So let's just say that's for one. Let's say this is for four people, okay? And while this is cooking, you can um, put a little olive oil, salt, pepper on asparagus, cut the asparagus, broccoli, whatever, and stick it into the toaster oven or the oven and just roast some vegetables that way. Or you can, you can have salad if you're not gonna eat this with rice, but we usually eat this with rice. And then like the asparagus or broccoli, some kind of, um, greens like that, something thicker. Of course, you can have any type of vegetable, but something like that. Okay, so that's easy. So just imagine that takes 10 minutes, right? And now I'm cooking this. All right. Don't fail me now, Saltica. Okay, so I turned it on and look at the time. Five minutes. So that was literally in five and a half minutes, five minutes. 
and you just turn off the heat, let it keep cooking here, right? You call your family together, it's time to eat, right? Hopefully someone has already set the table. So for us, um, my, what's it? My son, my daughter. My daughter was in charge of setting the table. Our son was in charge of putting everything into the sink. My husband was in charge of, or is still in charge of, like trash and putting the food away into the fridge. And then I was in charge of dishes. So that's how we did family night, uh, weeknight dinner. And so look, look how, let me bring this closer. I don't want to put it on the heat. Sorry, I had the fan on, but look at that. That is yummy. Oh, by the way, I did taste the picadillo and it's very good, yummy, yummy. So the beef picadillo has cooked faster than the roasted veggies, but let's just say that's five minutes. It's coming on eight minutes now. Hopefully your asparagus or broccoli is done, or you can just get the frozen veggies and heat those up, you know, make, make it simple. It's, it's a crazy weeknight, make it fast, but they still get a home cooked meal. Okay, before we go, I did want to show you this. I'm not using it for today because um, usually with the Filipino food, we kind of finish it all. But if I'm making something like chili or mac and cheese, I use this, which are the super cubes, and I'll put the link below. But it basically, example, chili, which I'll probably do in another video. You put the chili in here, it freezes to that shape. And then um, you could take it out, put it in the Ziploc, right? So it's held its shape already. You take that whole square and put it into this ceramic uh, dish, and you could heat it up that way, either in the toaster oven, oven, or the microwave, and I think it's fantastic. They also have, those are two cups, and then they also have the, I'm trying to see if I get it. They also have the one cup, but you can fill it halfway for half cup, and then they have an even smaller one. Uh, and then they have one for like little bitty ones or for like cookies, but I think they're kind of out of stock right now. But anyway, that's another thing that you can use for freezer meals. All right, friends, all done. I hope you enjoyed learning these three Filipino freezer meals, chicken adobo, picadillo, and salpicao. You can see how easy it is. And for the chicken adobo, just make sure if you're using drumsticks, it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook, but you can always cook things halfway, especially the adobo, and then cook it fully when it's time for those crazy weeknights or when you have that crazy weeknight. So those are three Filipino freezer meals that you can get from the freezer to your table in under 10 minutes. Make sure to check the show notes below. I have a free PDF for a declutter checklist. I also have a free PDF for how to set up your landing page, which we will be talking about more soon. But watch the next video to see how you can organize your freezer, the Working Mom Survival Guide to an Organized Freezer. Oh yeah, let me know in the comments below if you tried any of these recipes or if you've had this food before, let me know what you think about it. See ya. Are you tired of the daily scramble to find your keys, purse, work projects, backpacks, homework, and permission slips? Reclaim your sanity with these exclusive tips for setting up a stress-free landing zone. These strategies are for busy working moms just like you to save time and restore peace to your home. Enter your email and you'll receive a one-page PDF with four easy steps on how to set up a landing zone to save time. Create a home you love.